Welcome again, except this time it's not an exciting episode so much as it is a film review. And I do do these things. Shout out to Matios TV or Berhe, the homie from Twitter and uh, probably IRL because he's in the greater community of SoCal like me. But I just watched the film review or excuse me, I just watched the film. I'm going to review the film. Everything, everywhere, all at once. It's a nice sci-fi flick that follows this Chinese family that seems to have everything breaking down. The main character is Michelle Yeoh. If you don't know her, I'm sure you do. So Google her, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, Y-E-O-H. You know, you could check out the Wikipedia or the IMDB. And I, I peeped this at the New Art Theater, which is the HQ of the independent theater is known as Landmarks. I like them. They're relatively cheap and kind of smaller scale with uh, great movies. Sometimes their catchphrase is that they're not allergic to subtitles, nor am I. I grew up reading a lot of fan-made subtitles in anime and in manga and watching other foreign films as well, not just in the Japanese language, but we're talking about a Chinese family here. I know her most from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which I think predates The Matrix and was really doing what The Matrix was trying to do before The Matrix did in terms of special effects and set that whole genre in effect. I saw her more recently in Crazy Rich Asians and in Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings within the, the Marvel Universe. You may have seen her in other things, so check it out. So. I, I don't think she's new to you, but you may not know her name. I'll tell you, I didn't know her name, but she certainly was not new to me, so I could be better about that. I read a review from Cold Healing or the Dark Statistician and their substack, also named Cold Healing. And in their review, they compared it to uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. They compared to It's a Wonderful Life, this kind of classic black and white film that tries to show you how to have gratitude as the right attitude by guiding you through all of the different alternative possibilities of your life. In It's a Wonderful Life, it shoots back into the past and then does an al alternative version of what the world would have been like without you. In everything, everywhere, all at once, it's much crazier because we're dealing with uh, the multiverse. So all of these possible different universes within a larger multiverse. And so uh, you you get very silly, and because it's sci-fi, you you get uh, this kind of almost fantasy element. Like it's almost like, is it magic or is it science? Is it both? Is there no distinction between the two? So you get these transportation between worlds, and uh, you get doppelgangers in other worlds, which reminds me of the one by Jet Li, one of my favorite movies from way back in the day. And uh, the same way in which there were a lot of martial arts in the one and not in It's a Wonderful Life, you see a lot of martial arts in everything, everywhere, all at once. So an homage to all these martial arts uh, films out of China that she's been involved with as well. So definitely check it out. The new link that I'm going to draw for you today is comparing it to the Book of Ecclesiastes. So Michelle Yeoh's character is this woman who has kind of a broken relationship with her husband, but she doesn't even realize it because she's focusing on her job, which is running a laundromat, which is itself kind of failing and in trouble with the IRS, which is itself for her uh, a failure in the eyes of her, her father and the disappointments that she had with the relationship with her father, which then bleeds into her relationship with her daughter, who happens to be a lesbian youth, and she it doesn't quite sit right with her. So all of these things there's a process of them trying to resolve them throughout the movie by exploring all of the different facets and possibilities of all of their doppelgangers in multiple worlds. You know, in one world, she's an actress and a martial artist. In in one world, uh, you know, she uh, she is uh, like a space hunter, a, a traveler through the multiverse. You know, she's she's different things in different worlds, and her husband is also different things in different worlds. Her daughter is different things in different worlds. Her father is different things in different worlds. In, in one, you kind of see him struggling uh, to walk and, and uh, only speaking Chinese. In another, you hear him speaking fluent English and zooming by on like a high-powered wheelchair that 
has gadgets and he's got this uh, mission, he's super mission driven as well. So you see him from traditional to futuristic. But I think that this movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, is very comparable to the book of Ecclesiastes. What I mean by that is in the beginning, you see, you see this sort of nihilism, um, not the way that the gray mirror talks about nihilism, but nihilism in the sense of there is no meaning in the world. There is no meaning in the cosmos. There is no meaning in the multiverse. Uh, her uh, daughter, this isn't a big spoiler alert, but if you don't like spoiler alerts, go away. Her, her daughter seems to be the main villain, but there seems to be a, a reconciliation arc between her and her daughter and, and the different versions of her throughout the multiverse. And her daughter kind of becomes omnipotent and almost omniscient, but not quite omniscient enough to realize that there is meaning in the universe. And so she kind of doesn't, uh, she usually hunts down and destroys people who mess with her power, but she kind of doesn't destroy her mother. And she just seeks a relationship with her, not knowing what's going to happen. So I guess we could say she's omnipotent, but not omniscient, all powerful, but not all knowing. And her mother is uh, super weak but has this growth arc like almost any anime or, or manga or classic hero's journey gets progressively stronger starts experimenting with herself so kind of rem reminds you of uh, rw bodybuilding twitter the way in which people experiment on themselves and share recipes but she experiments with herself by subjecting her uh her memories and her life to all of the different lives of all of her doppelgangers throughout the multiverse and as she becomes more powerful, more powerful, and more like her daughter, she kind of chases her daughter through the multiverse until she shows her that there is meaning in the universe. And that meaning is established through relational love. Now, there's no explicit talks of God there. But when you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, there's something similar going on where the beginning, it seems to say that everything is vanity. Everything is a bleeding and vanishing breath. Everything has no worth, everything has no meaning. But by the end of the book, you realize that all the wisdom of man, though it may be useless, the wisdom of God is not useless, it's useful in fact. And so you apply the wisdom, the hukmana, the sophia, the wisdom, the teaching, the Torah of the Lord to your life on a daily basis till kingdom come. I'll close out by reading Ecclesiastes chapter one, verses one to 11. Then you could read all 12 chapters of Ecclesiastes on your own for homework, watch everything, everywhere, all at once, and tell me if you see any connections with a sort of outer layer of meaninglessness. But then when you get rid of that wax layer and find the gold inside, the gold that is hidden inside is the meaning of life, which is love and relational love at that. And if you push it further, sacrificial love relational love of which the lord jesus christ according to the gospel of john chapter 15 says there is no greater love anyway ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 1 to 11 and kjv the words of the preacher or the ecclesiast the son of david king in jerusalem vanity of vanities says the preacher vanity of vanities all is vanity or you could say vanishing breath of vanishing breath or fleeting breath of fleeting breath abel of abel hebel of hebel what profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun one generation passes away and another generation comes but the earth abides forever the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose the wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full to the place from which the rivers come. Where they return again, all things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after.